Hello, everyone. I'm Ana Maria Montero, and you're watching Tech Talk. And today, our guest is Professor Francis Schwartz. He is from EMPA Applied Wood Materials Lab in St. Gallen. So basically, Francis, you're an expert in wood. Nice. <laughs> in, in very simplified terms. Nice to be here, Ana Maria. Yes, um, I, but I do not only work with wood. Uh, I also work with uh, wood decay fungi. Which brings us to, you've invented something called mycowood, which is a process by which you treat wood with fungi. Yes, with specifically selected fungi that change the acoustic properties or the physical properties of the wood. And from this wood, we can then build violins that sound very similar to um, Cremona violin, for example, Stradivari. And this is from, this is important, this is an important distinction because these are like the top violins, right? In the world of violins, these are the most uh, coveted. Yes. Well, the first violins were made in the 16th century. And um, so the first, there were four generations of Amati, then three generations of uh, Guaneri. And actually Stradivari uh, learned his trade under Guaneri and... Uh, he lived for 95 free years and built approximately 1,100 instruments. Very productive man. <laughs> That's right. So if you yeah. consider that you need uh, one to three months to build a violin, so I think most of his time is spent in the uh, workshop. <laughs> no doubt. And so to be able to recreate that sound is really something. Yes, that's right, especially because we cannot find uh, the wood uh, that Stradivari used. So the, the quality that? of the wood is inferior to the wood that Stradivari used to build his violins. The reason is global warming, mm -hmm. because trees with a high quality tone wood, they grow at high elevations under very cool conditions, so long winters, cool winters, cool short summers. And due to global warming, um, the trees are growing quicker, they lay down wood with a higher density. And actually, the use of fungi is uh, advantageous because you can substitute the cold climate by using specific fungi. So basically, it, this wood, the wood created, used to create the Stradivari and the other uh, Cremona violins no longer exists that's in nature. That's right. Uh, and the reason is uh, that uh, actually this is well documented by scientists that uh, the coolest period of the last millennium was the Mound Minimum which coincides actually with uh, the lifetime of Stradivari. And in this time, uh, uh, we had reduced solar energy and the wood that was laid down in trees at high elevation was very homogeneous. So uh, the cells were evenly thin-walled, uh, the cell walls are very narrow, and these are important properties for the superior tone wood. So if these um, traditional violins took what, you said three months, more or less, to build from start to finish. How long does the mica wood violin take? Well, initially, when we made the first violins that were also used in a blind test in 2009, um, at that time, we were treating the wood six to nine months because these were prototype violins. And uh, now we have improved uh, or standardized the method and the wood is only um, treated for two months. Okay, so... And then you have to put, and then you have to make the violin out of the wood. But the treatment of the wood is two months. That's two months, exactly. This is the process of putting the fungi, fungi, excuse me, into the wood. Yes. So this is a process where we have built a bioreactor and we have a fluid media where we're growing the fungus, and the wood is more or less soaked in this growth media. And in time, what the fungus does, it reduces the density of the late wood cells that are thicker and then the wood becomes very homogeneous and this improves the acoustic properties of the violins. Where did this idea come from to say that you wanted to create this wood in order to recreate violins? Well, in 2003, I had a chance meeting with Martin Schleske, who is um, perhaps the most renowned violin maker in, in Germany. He lives in Munich. And uh, as a scientist, I was curious and I wanted to know what is the secret of a, a, sub, a superior uh, violin? And that's the secret perhaps even of the Stradivari. And the interesting thing about Martin Schleske, he's, he's not only a violin maker, he's a, also a physicist. Mm. And he told me that most 
violin makers. They have an empirical approach. They look at the wood structure and they make sure that the wood has uh, narrow annual rings, that it has a homogeneous structure, low uh, uh, late wood proportion, no knots, no resin ducts. Uh, but most of these uh, violin makers, as been shown in studies, cannot distinguish between high quality and poor quality tone wood. But somehow they still manage to make a good violin. Now Martin Schleske's approach is uh, first to make certain measurements of the physical properties. So he measures the, uh, the speed of sound and the density of the wood. And if the ratio is very wide, he says, if I select such wood, it's almost impossible to build um, a poor violin. So then you said, I know how to do this. <laughs> yes, I have an idea for you. <laughs> and, and that surprised him because I, I, he, he also mentioned one secret uh, that is often used by violin makers, that they use a specific varnish to increase the stiffness, thereby increasing the speed of sound. varnish. Every maker as, has every, their own every, varnish, every, right? Yes. And Martin Schleska has, uh, has uh, examined uh, many, many varnishes and actually shows most of the varnish are, are counterproductive for the sound resonance of the wood because actually they increase the weight. And high weight means uh, inferior uh, sound properties. And so I said to Martin, well, it's one approach improving uh, the stiffness, uh, increasing the stiffness, but has no one ever thought of going the opposite direction, increasing the weight? And he looked at me and said, no, but because this would have to be a significant weight loss. And then I said, well, you can use specific decay fungi to reduce the weight of the wood. And he was quite shocked because I think what he then imagined was the wood that is mostly completely destroyed by decay fungi. And this is true, but there are a few decay fungi, if you understand the adaptation of these fungi to the wood structure, mm -hmm. and you select the right fungus, they will only slightly degrade the wood, they will degrade it in, in the way and manner you want it, and actually the acoustic properties should sound a lot better. And uh, this was something we examined and, uh, and we verified this working hypothesis um, working on wood strips, and eventually we then decided to make violins out of this uh, fungal treated wood for a blind test. I was going to say, you fast, fast forward now seven years where you are now, you've already you conducted a blind test, which is the ultimate test, right? Could experts tell the difference between the Stradivari or the non treated uh, fungi treated violins and yours? So, altogether, there were five violins two fungal-treated violins, or two non-fungal-treated violins. And um, actually, um, all these four violins were made from wood of one tree. So the properties were identical. And then there was Matthew Trussler playing on his uh, Stradivari. Matthew Trussler, a star solist from Britain, playing on his Stradivari. And all these, he played on all these five violins behind the curtain. And actually, the result was that the overwhelming majority of the audience fought that the nine-month fungal violin is actually a Stradivari. That's unbelievable. Well, perhaps one reason for this is during fungal treatment, we do change certain properties. But one property that is altered very, very strongly is the dampening of the wood. And this is perhaps difficult to explain, uh, but in simple words, wood that's not dampened has very, very strong high notes. And this is often irritating for the ear. And after fungal treatment, we find that these high notes vanish and the violin sounds warm and mellow, just like many Cremonese violins. Now we're looking uh, in the back wall, speaking of sound, it looks like they're doing some kind of acoustic testing on the violins. Is this what's happening at the moment? Yes. So I think what I have to stress here, it's not possible to measure the sound quality in a blind test. This is very, very subjective. Although our result was very, very clear, um, what my colleagues at the Empire and the Acoustic Department are doing, uh, conducting numerous studies to try and quantify the sound so that we can perhaps say, look, we have reason to believe that the sound of the fungal treated wood does sound very similar to these old Cremona uh, violins. And also, I think the last step, if we can demonstrate this, if my colleagues can demonstrate this, then um, and the last step would be to conduct psychoacoustic tests also with a, a selective audience. And this is happening at EMPA, this right? Is which is uh, where you are also uh, in San Galen, and they are one of your 
uh, sponsors, supporters for this project. How else are you making this happen in terms of funding and support? Well, initially the project was um, funded by EMPA internally. Then uh, we managed to um, submit uh, a CTI project was, that was accepted. It's a, perhaps a, different, a slightly different approach, but we, we managed to gain enough information to standardize the process for treating the wood for violence. And uh, we were very, very fortunate that after the blind test in Osnabrück, uh, the Walter Fischli Foundation approached us and they were very keen to, to, fund, uh, to fund the further work because uh, uh, his interest is predominantly then eventually to build violence for young, talented solists who cannot really afford uh, a two million or three million dollar um, Stradivari, Amati or Guarneri de Gazoo. Yeah, this is definitely a, perhaps a better alternative. I don't know how much they would cost in the end. I have no idea at the moment. Uh, the, the process of treating the wood, this will be additional um, 5,000 Swiss francs. And uh, I think for a, a modern violin these days, a really good violin, you, you already pay 30 to 40,000 Swiss francs. Okay, so it's still still an investment. Yes, and I think <laughs> it's sure. still a lot more reasonable than a, than than a very expensive Cremona sure. vine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, can you imagine an orchestra full of uh, mica wood instruments? Well, in a recent is that possible? <laughs> well, in a recent uh, interview, um, Walter Fischli mentioned that would be his dream mm. to to uh, to have a orchestra, music instruments made from mica wood, and. Um, uh, and in the way he supported us, I think this could actually happen one day. Oh, you think this is, could you go into a mass production with this kind of process or? I'm careful about that at the moment because uh, I think the approach with the foundation, um, I think it's, it's very, very sin sincere. And uh, I, I personally believe this could be a method uh, that could be used by violin makers also in Cremona because they have to be careful because the Chinese, violin making industry is becoming stronger and stronger. And uh, I think if we could have maintained this special sound uh, that's warm and mellow that uh, we find with many antique violins, if we can maintain it for the more modern violins and, and support our violin makers uh, in, in Europe, I think that would um, be of great help. Yeah, because uh, the Chinese are, how many People are learning the violin there. I, I read recently that 30 million um, Chinese are learning to play the violin, violin at the moment. And obviously many of them would like to have a, a violin with superior properties. And um, I'm quite confident that with our method that uh, this is possible. There's a market for it, at least for high-end violins. I think so, yes. <laughs> for sure. Now, what other applications? Now, we, we've got mm. you here holding a bag of... I'm not sure what, but um, what is yes. it and what are the yeah. other applications of your research? Well, um, it's Besides violins. Yes, it's interesting to note that approximately scientists believe there are about 1.2 million violins worldwide, uh, 1.2 million <laughs> fungi worldwide, and only 10% have been described. And, and we're losing important fungi every day if you think about the application for human medicine antibiotics. Yes. Um, then you see the importance because fungi may have in future. Is Penicillium a... is also a, a, a mold. Most people, if they would see it in the fridge, fridge growing on vegetables, they think it's Ugh, it's horrible. But on the ha other hand, you know, it's a, a very, very well, it's the first uh, antibiotic that was described. Mm -hmm. And um, but what you see here is actually a, a product we've developed, um, which is actually a, super, a substitute for for biocides, for, uh, for pesticides. So this is a, a natural fungus that we've cultivated for on, on mice granules, and we apply it to control wood decay fungi that occur in the soil, and that then degrade telegraph poles. And these telegraph poles, they fail after uh, perhaps sometimes five to six years, although they're supposed to last for 30 years. And with this very simple method that we've developed, we can treat the soil and eradicate the decay fungus in the soil. Well, with only 10% of the fungi being used, it sounds like you have your work cut out for you, <laughs> Francis. That's good to know, and I'm, I'm looking forward to Job my security. future work. Yes, exactly. <laughs>